Yeah, well, a favorite movie. Um, uh, there are several of them that I'm really pretty crazy about, but uh, actually Rear Window. Rear Window, the, uh, the Jimmy Stewart, uh, the Alfred Hitchcock film. Uh, there's something about that. Maybe it's kind of retro, the, the technicolor. Uh, there's just something about that film that really pulls me in. Uh, hobbies? Uh, well, I, I love music, and I'm uh, an avid record collector. I still collect the old stuff, the vinyl. And uh, by the time I got to college, I was spending uh, money that I should have been using on tuition, <laughs> on adding vinyl to my collection, you know? And I'm up to, I don't know, probably about 6,000 records. People ask me what type of music do you like. It's pretty much all over the board. I mean, there's a lot of rock in there. There's a lot of R&B. Uh, there's even disco. I've got classical. I've got a lot of jazz. i got some pretty rare uh, editions of, you know, Miles Davis and Billie Holiday and that kind of stuff. Hi, I'm Tim Warden. I'm a senior solutions architect for DataCore Software. I want to talk to you today about highly available architectures, particularly with respect to storage. A little bit before we begin about my background, I've been in IT for over 30 years. Uh, about 15 of that I spent in software engineering at Apple Computer. Uh, then I went into uh, storage uh, as a systems engineer working for Data General, uh, working with their Clarion product. As a software engineer, it occurred to me that one of the things that they were doing I found very interesting was uh, basically writing software to do what other people called firmware. Uh, it was around 2000, they were getting ready to implement the Clarion on a Windows platform, uh, Windows embedded at that time. And I thought that that was really fascinating because suddenly you could free up, you could do so much more with only software, you could suddenly attach to any device, connect to any device. And uh, so in about 2002, I went to work for a company called DataCore, where I work now, uh, who, were, who had the same vision, but with DataCore, they wanted it to be truly an open architecture, software-defined storage. As that old song by Steely Dan goes, Asia, throw out the hardware, let's do it right. If you do it as a software-defined storage architecture, you can hook it up to anything, uh, and that's really what uh, I found to be fascinating. Data is, uh, storage is important to me because data is important. If your data is important to you, your data lives on storage, storage should be important to you. It is the foundation of your data center. I think the most common challenges faced by businesses today managing storage, uh, without a doubt, it's downtime. Planned or unplanned, it doesn't make any difference. We live in a 24-7 world. Businesses and organizations have no tolerance for downtime. We as individuals have no tolerance for downtime. When you think about it, on a personal level, if your email is unavailable, if you could not get to your Facebook page, um, take that, expand that out and think about businesses going to a bank and they're trying to do, they're trying to schedule some maintenance window for their storage array and uh, you can't get to the ATM because of it. Completely unacceptable. Sounds ludicrous, but uh, hospitals, insurance companies, global industries, nobody has tolerance for, uh, for downtime these days. And we've all heard about the impacts of unplanned downtime. Very well documented case of a Department of Motor Vehicles, a DMV, uh, a couple of years ago where a component failure caused an outage of a SAN. When it was combined with human uh, error added to it, uh, they basically had data loss and they were down for two weeks. Uh, when you think about local governments, the first responders, if your storage array is down, it's a critical night, I don't know, like New Year's Eve, and uh, the fire department gets a call, they can't uh, consult the GIS data, they can't get to any of the IT systems to find out where the gas lines are to turn them off before they walk into danger. Police department gets called out for a uh, uh, you know, a domestic squabble. They can't consult uh, their databases to find out what's happening at this address. Have there been prior incidents? Does a guy have a gun? What are we walking into? All of us depend on IT now. It's 24-7. It has to be up. And guess what? It's all based on data, which is sitting on the storage array. So to address this, increasingly, businesses are turning to highly available systems to improve the availability of their data. What I'm talking about is synchronous mirroring. It's the, at the heart of this, providing active, active, redundant copies of the data. Now, SAN Symphony V is a product that DataCore provides. This is exactly what we do. This, the whole product was based upon this notion that you want to have two copies of your data that are both active. Think about it. When you go into a data center, I've visited quite a few in, in my tenure, 
you find that everything in that data center is redundant. They've got, you know, redundant networking because, after all, it's the backbone of the data center. Fabric, same story. Uh, all the cabling, the infrastructure there is redundant. Important application, what do you do with it? You put it in a cluster. This is pretty much a no-brainer with products like, you know, v, uh, vSphere, uh, Zen Server, Hyper-V. Uh, you need to be able to move the workloads around, evacuate VMs so you can take one of, uh, one of the servers down for maintenance or whatever. Uh, even the power, the PDUs, the cooling, everything is redundant. And yet, so many data centers, there's one silo of storage. You ask them why, they say, well, it's highly available. No, it isn't. It's fault tolerant. That is to say, it has redundancy built into the chassis. But the chassis in and of itself is still a 19-inch rack mountable single point of failure. So that's not enough. You ask why haven't more businesses adopted high availability with their storage? I'd say there's probably three reasons. Cost, tradition, time. Let's talk about tradition first. As I was saying, a lot of these guys are told that the storage array is a highly available device. Probably comes from the fact that shared storage, more than anything else, came out of the mainframe world. You had one mainframe, you had one storage array. As shared storage moved into the open systems market, open systems had already addressed the concept of high availability being true redundancy. But again, this, this new creature, this shared storage device, was proposed to be highly available within the chassis. Everybody just accepted it. And when people suddenly realized they want to have two copies of the data, they would approach their traditional vendors who would propose a solution to do a synchronous mirror, uh, mirror but it involved their high-end arrays. It had to be the same model to the same model. And usually there was very, very uh, expensive licensing involved to do the synchronous mirror. The costs were exorbitant. It was a non-starter. And finally, time. So you've got to look for a, an alternative solution. Most CIOs, most storage admins, the people in the data center, they're overworked. They're trying to keep everything running. They don't have a lot of time to go and do the research necessary to find the right solution. It's something, it's, uh, that's one research that you don't want to get wrong. You don't want to put the wrong foundation in uh, for your data because that could cost you your job. So what do I mean by a highly available architecture? No single point of failure. Uh, literally, I'm talking about, as opposed to having redundant components within the system, I'm also talking about having redundant systems, especially for your storage. So for me, there are six principal uh, components or tenets of a comprehensive high availability solution. Uh, very briefly, redundancy, autonomy, separation, asymmetry, diversity, and polylithic design. I'll discuss each one briefly. So redundancy we already mentioned. You want two copies of your data. For autonomy, you want those two copies operated or presented by autonomous systems. That is to say, systems that have no codependency on each other. Uh, they can function, uh, one system can function without the other system being present. Separation falls out of that. I can't tell you how many data centers I've walked into redundant. Components are racked one on top of the other, whether it was the brocade switches or the Cisco or whatever switches. The, uh, the hypervisors, the servers that were running the hypervisors, all in the same chassis. Maybe the blades, one chassis for all those blades. Uh, you could get much higher availability if you would simply separate those on different racks into different PDUs and hopefully one of them isn't sitting under a, a fire sprinkler. Now asymmetry is another concept of uh, basically if you're using the exact same model uh, of a product in the same series, it may have an inherent design defect uh, or more commonly, maybe the firmware, when you do the firmware upgrade on these devices, the firmware has a bug. You've got two copies of the bug sitting there, so you've increased your likelihood of having a failure. If you're implementing your redundancy with devices that are of different model or different manufacturer, you've just reduced that, uh, that possibility for a, a double failure. Now, as far as diversity goes, in this case, I'm talking about the infrastructure around those redundant systems. That infrastructure should also be redundant. So you know what I'm talking about, cables, power, network, fabric. Uh, if you have the possibility, you want them going across separate ladders, you know, different runs for those, for those cables and not all trunked together. Uh, and finally, polylithic design. While it seems attractive, the idea of having one large frame of storage, 
the reality is, you know the old expression, the bigger they come, the harder they fall. If you've put all your storage into one giant frame and that frame has a problem, you've got a problem because your entire data center is out. If you go with smaller models of, uh, and, and basically you're isolating your storage into three models, perhaps from the same vendor, uh, you may still have an outage, but you've only affected the data that was on that system. Your other systems are still up and running, so hopefully some of your other IT, some of your other applications are still available as well. So those are the six pillars for me of a comprehensive high availability architecture. Now, I think one of the challenges that faces a lot of IT departments when they try to embrace that, particularly polylithic design over monolithic, is overcoming a misconception that, uh, that high-end or tier one storage is required in order to properly implement high availability. Uh, when you are going with a software-defined storage architecture and you've virtualized your storage, suddenly you've commoditized the hardware. And when you start pulling those devices apart and looking at the components therein, you realize, wow, the disk drives are only made by two manufacturers. Uh, maybe you don't really need to have the Tier 1 storage array to get the level of availability and performance and redundancy that, you, that you're uh, attempting to achieve. In fact, I would argue that entry-level systems made by a lot of the server manufacturers, these so-called JBODs, some of them have uh, intelligent controllers on them, uh, would provide you with as much reliability and performance as some of the high-end storage arrays, particularly when you place these devices as commodity back-end storage behind a software-defined storage architecture, a, a virtual architecture for your storage. Uh, in fact, uh, let's face it, when you do virtualize your storage with a product like DataCore Sans Symphony, you're making a strategic initiative. You're basically changing the way you're going to do storage hardware acquisition in the future. For me, there are four criteria that you will look at for future storage acquisition. Cost, that one's never going to change. Reliability, vis-a-vis -vis your project. Performance, again, vis-a-vis -vis your project. Is it archival data or is it uh, you know, some high-performance uh, database that you're trying to uh, satisfy performance requirements? Finally, uh, for many government institutions, they have green mandates. So uh, you know, choosing a storage uh, device hardware uh, that is green. Now, lots of vendors offer high availability solutions, and synchronous mirroring is at the heart of all of those solutions. My problem with those solutions is that they're vendor specific, same brand, same model. If you have a heterogeneous data center, that's going to be very, very costly because for each one of the brands and models that you have on the floor, you're going to have to match it with the same uh, at, the other, at the other site or across the data center. Uh, that's cost prohibitive. Most of those solutions aren't active-active. Those that claim to be usually do so by IP or worldwide name spoofing. Those that don't do worldwide name uh, spoofing or IP spoofing are usually requiring you to implement scripts on your host to do some kind of failover or maybe using some third party product like for instance VMware's SRM. Uh, that's suboptimal for me. Now again, I think if you think about it from the vendor's perspective, they're saying their storage arrays are highly available. We know they're actually fault tolerant, but from their perspective, why would you want to have two storage arrays that are actively presenting the same data? Well, DataCore, uh, our San Symphony product, was designed with that in mind from the start. See, we understood that in a software-defined or software-driven storage architecture, we're going to put that software on your, a standard x64 platform. And that platform is inherently a single point of failure. So you're going to want to have at least two for high availability. Again, redundancy. But why stop there? Why not have the silo of storage behind it highly available as well? That's the way the product was designed from the outset. And I guess you could say that that high availability or redundancy is in our DNA. Now I'd like to show you, uh, if you will, take a look at the, at the diagram on the screen. I'd like to show you what this actually looks like. You can see that there are two data core servers. Uh, these are dedicated servers that are running our software on them. As you can see on the screen, there are a couple of storage arrays, ostensibly different brands, different models. 
the idea here being, yes, you can mix and match. If you don't have to throw out your existing uh, assets in order to implement high availability. Um, furthermore, these devices are actually going to implement the synchronous mirroring for you, so you don't have to add any additional licensing to any of the storage arrays that you're buying. Like I said before, you're going to be buying them for their reliability, their performance, their cost, and eventually how green they are. On the front end, the hosts that are actually accessing the, their LUNs, their, their volumes, will be accessing them via the targets presented by the data core nodes. The data core nodes are going to be presenting a shared virtual disk off of both controllers. Now this is an N plus one architecture, so it scales naturally, but obviously in a case of strict high availability, you're going to need at least two, as this diagram shows. Now, we implement in this, uh, in this process, we implement an industry standard called ALUA, Asymmetric Logical Unit Access. And uh, this means that basically all the modern hosts that you have, you know, vSphere, and Server, Hyper-V, and the like, uh, they all can use their default built-in multipathing in order to access either one of the nodes. And ALUA has a standard that we respect called Optimized Pass, which makes this product ideal for doing a metro or stretch cluster. So this is what it looks like. This is what I wanted to talk to you about, and I'll open things up for questions now. Well, for me, it's pretty obvious. When you've got an abstraction layer in place, you are basically commoditizing uh, the, the storage hardware, but more importantly, it allows you to federate the storage hardware. So from this abstraction layer, this software-defined layer, we're doing a sync mirroring between any different type of storage device. You actually end up having two copies of the data, but we really don't care what storage hardware it's on. So this makes it ideal for if you happen to have heterogeneous storage devices on the floor, uh, this makes it perfect for achieving that high availability without actually having to double, uh, you know, go out and buy a lot of different storage arrays from specific vendors. That depends. In the case of SAN Symphony V, no, clearly not, and I'll explain why. Um, SAN Symphony V as a storage defined architecture actually implements storage processor cache at that abstraction layer. So like with any system, when you're adding a new level or layer of cache into it, you're going to boost your performance on the reads and on the writes. Uh, think about it in terms of CPUs. Back in the old days, the CPU, they talked about, uh, they didn't talk about cache on it, and eventually you saw that they had one, two, three layers of cache. The objective is always the same. You're trying to get the data as close to the processor as possible. This abstraction layer presented by a storage-defined architecture such as SAN Symphony V does exactly that. It moves the data closer into a cache layer that's closer to the, uh, to the hardware. Well, it would seem intuitive that a monolithic system would be only one thing to manage, right? Uh, but as we said before, if it has a failure, you're completely out of business, right? Uh, with a polylithic system, you can isolate those failures. Turns out it's no more difficult to manage uh, multiple systems if they're all being managed by the same abstraction layer. And when you look at SAN Symphony V, that's what it proposes, a, a console that uh, allows you to federate and manage multiple systems regardless of the brand of the model. Uh, exactly that. For me, employment is a symbiotic relationship you know, between employee and employer. Uh, for me to get excited about it, uh, I've got to have a good relationship with the employer. It's a great place to work. But more importantly, I have to have a product that I can really believe in. And uh, you know, I already mentioned I'd spent 15 years at Apple Computer. I've always loved Apple. I've loved their products. DataCore SAN Symphony V is a product that I can really get behind. For me, it's a game changer. It's rel relatively unique in the industry. And uh, as you can tell, it's something I'm pretty passionate about. A good example was uh, a recent customer, uh, uh, recent customer reference uh, call that I set up, and I was uh, lucky enough to actually be able to attend. Sitting there watching the customer across from me talking to a potential customer about the way that San Symphony V has changed their operations. Uh, they were really happy. They say storage is something they don't even worry about anymore. Uh, the cost savings that it, uh, that it uh, uh, gave to them, 
as well as the fact that they do have redundant storage. And by the way, the particular customer, customer I'm speaking about, which happens to be out in Arizona, uh, recently uh, implemented a metro cluster, and they did so without any downtime. They basically took their two redundant systems and moved one of them into another building uh, on the other side of the campus. They love it.